Good morning, everybody. Well, welcome to the RAC ICC update webinar. Um, as you can imagine, we're getting an increasing number of attendees just joining. So if you don't mind bearing with us a second, um, we'll just wait for a few more people to join. Um, we've already got over 70 people attending and um, there's 190 people registered for it. So I can appreciate it's a topic that's of great interest to you. Um, I certainly hope that the time is going to be usefully spent this morning. And um, thank you very much for joining. Um, we'll get on the way in, in just a few minutes. Good morning to everybody that's just recently joined. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I can see the numbers are still pouring in in terms of people registering um, to hear the ESR filing update. Um, I can tell it's a topic of great interest and importance to you, and I hope you'll find the session useful. Um, just bear with me one more minute while we let more people join um, and we'll get underway. Thank you. Right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the RAC ICC ESR filing update. So I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me talking through our experiences so far with what we found um, in relation to filing these very important ESR notifications and reports by the deadline, which you know has been reset for the 31st of, of January. Um, just by way of introduction, um, I hope most of you are aware that you're talking with Alan Bogle, who's the registrar at RAC ICC. Um, been at RAC ICC for three years now um, and thoroughly enjoyed the role um, and really got a lot of um, enjoyment out of helping registered agents navigate their way through various new developments that we've seen in the region over the last few years. Um, you've been very supportive as an initiative such as Ultimate Beneficial Owner, National Economic Register, and of course, Economic Substance. One reason for having the webinar is there was an awful lot of activity that ran on to the end of last year when we had the original deadline of the 31st of December. And we're very grateful to all of the registered agents and all of the company um, officers who made the filings uh, by the 31st of December deadline. Um, but of course, any of you that were using the system at the time um, would have known that there were delays and some timeouts um, in being able to submit just understandably due to the sheer volume of the whole country uh, using the same portal at the same time to, to meet that deadline. So the Ministry very kindly and um, obviously rightly extended the deadline to the 31st of January to give everybody some more time. Um, one obvious point I will make now is to say please don't leave it till the 31st of January uh, to make your notifications and filings uh, because we don't want to be in the situation again where people are struggling with the system and the volumes to make the, the, the deadline um, and then miss the deadline because we've had a very clear understanding from the ministry that there will be no further 
extensions. So who should be filing now? The revised deadlines to take us to the 31st of January are for any economic substance notifications that were due for the period that started on the 1st of January 2019 and ended in any time during 2019 or indeed any time within the last six months. So if the reporting period ended by the 31st of July 2020, then the filing for the notification would be due by the 31st of January 2021. So anything that started in 2019 is now due to, to file the notification. The notification has a six month deadline. Similarly, any report that was due because the year ended on the 31st of December 2019 is now due to file because we've gone through a 12 month period. So six months for notification, 12 months for reports, but because we're playing catch up on the 2019 year, basically everybody has to file both by this revised deadline. And this is a direct quote from the ministry, just confirming that there will be no um, further extensions. It is a one-off extension and failure to, to submit your notification or report and report uh, will result in the apl application of penalties. And it's interesting that they don't use the term may there, they're saying will. Um, and so very important. Um, and I can understand why so many of you have joined the call today just to understand who needs to file, what they need to file and what our experiences of the filings so far have been. I wanted to explain RAC ICC's role in this. Um, we do have an important role to play in helping all RAC ICC companies that need to file their ESR um, to do so. And our role is in verifying the submissions. So every notification and every report that you file on a RAC ICC company, we are looking at and verifying the details. What we're not doing is confirming that a company has or hasn't met economic substance. That's not our role, but our role is to just verify that the information that's provided matches what we know about the, that particular entity. We also have a role to play in trying to identify those companies that should have filed, but have failed to do so. And there'll be more about that in the coming months as we obviously the first thing we have to do is look at who has filed um, and then we will have a follow-up exercise to do to understand the companies that maybe should have done that haven't. I want to make the point that RAC ICC is not the organisation that is imposing penalties on this. Penalties will be issued by the Federal Tax Authority late report filings that are, um, you know, suffer a 50,000 dirham penalty, that penalty is not being levied by RAC ICC. Um, and that is important when we come to the appeals process because you're not coming to RAC ICC to appeal a penalty that's been levied. Um, this will have to be to the ministry. Um, I'm sure you're going to have some questions as we go through this. I can't promise that I will answer all questions um, today on the session. There is a Q&A function. Um, I'll look at questions once I've done the talk and see what's there and see if I can answer any now. Um, if there are any that I feel I need to respond back to you privately after the session, um, we'll do that. And also if we see any themes coming through or any topics that seem to need more clarification, then of course we'll send updates. Um, part of RAC ICC's role is to update you on information that comes out from the Ministry. Um, and coincidentally, the Ministry are holding an update themselves today for the regulatory authorities. And so if we learn of anything from that that we feel is important to communicate with you, 
um, of course, we'll make sure we send that information out. So we do have an education role to play, as well as a verification role to play. Um, and we're taking that, as you'd expect, very seriously. The next information is the information that we've already emailed to you. We've sent these details out um, in recent updates. Uh, but nonetheless, I thought it was worth repeating um, and just going through these key points with you. Um, we've also added in some things that we found when we've been going through the notifications and reports that have been submitted so far that we hope will help you with any further reports and submissions or even maybe some amendments on ones that you've already made that you'd like to, to do. So the key point here that all entities that conduct relevant activities are required to refile directly with the ministry, even if they've previously filed the details with RAC ICC. I don't want you to feel that you wasted your time making those RAC ICC filings. They were very useful to us. They gave us an idea and they gave the ministry an idea of the numbers of companies that were going to be involved and would need to refile. Because we were asking for information from every company, it gave us a very good understanding um, and gave us assurance that companies that need to file will have done so. If we hadn't asked every company to file, we now wouldn't know whether companies have just failed to. We now have a better understanding of who should have filed or who needs to refile and who doesn't need to refile. Um, so that information is historic now, it's parked, it's no longer relevant to the Ministry. They really do require the updated notifications and reports for you to file. Very important that the filing deadlines are met for both the notification and the economic substance report. We have more than 100 instances at the moment where companies have filed notifications but not yet filed the report. And our concern is that maybe they feel that because they filed the notification, that's all they need to do. So it's very important that companies that have filed notifications have a look at the dashboard of the ministry to see whether there's a report pending. Um, because if you don't file the report on time, it's a 50,000 dirham penalty. So please, 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 look at the dashboard that you've already contributed to, um, just make sure for your own you know, peace of mind that there isn't anything outstanding there. Um, it would be awful to feel that a penalty of 50,000 dirhams gets levied and you didn't know that there was a report due. So please have a look at that on your dashboard in, in the portal. Companies not conducting relevant activities are not required to file. We have had hundreds of companies file to confirm that they don't conduct a relevant activity. Um, nothing wrong in doing that. Obviously, it, you've spent time doing it. We spend time checking it. But um, at the end of the day, you don't have to file if the company is not conducting a relevant activity. That's different to not having income or claiming an exemption. We'll talk about those later on. But unless you're conducting a relevant activity, um, you don't need to file. Please also check the definitions of the relevant activities because we are seeing instances of distribution and service companies filing when actually they do not deal with group companies, they only deal with third parties. So you could be a distribution or a service company distributing goods, providing services to third parties. That does not make you a distribution service company under ESR. So please don't just look at the headline that says holding company or the headline that says investment company or the headline that says distribution or service company or indeed shipping company. It's important to look at the definitions in the guidance to make sure that your company is conducting a relevant activity. I've already mentioned that we're not accepting any further extensions. And really seriously, the best place you can go for information on this is the Ministry of Finance website. It's a very comprehensive site. It's got an awful lot of information on there. 
And from that, you should be able to work out what the requirements are. If there is any uncertainty, obviously and understandably, agents have been contacting us, clients have been contacting us, asking for our opinions, and we will certainly help where we can, but really seriously recommended by the ministry, independent professional advice is sought um, if you are uncertain as to what the requirements are. And now we go into some of the questions that have been asked um, on the forms and the people have, have struggled with. So for the purposes of economic substance reporting, it asks whether your company is a mainland company or a free zone company. And people have understandably saying, well, it's neither, it's an offshore company, it's an international business company, it's a RAC ICC. Um, for the purposes of ESR, it is considered to be a free zone company. So if you look at the list of registered authorities, RAC ICC is on that list as a free zone. Um, so whilst technically it wouldn't necessarily be considered a free zone for the purposes of ESR, it is. Um, one other issue that people have had is we've got a number of obviously international clients wanting to do the, um, the filing. The Ministry of Finance portal has obviously been designed for UAE entities, UAE individuals, UAE residents. And so the portal asks for a UAE mobile number. And of course, if you're living overseas or you may even be a resident here, but you're still using you know, a, um, a mobile number from your home jurisdiction, you won't necessarily have one. Um, the Ministry can't, within the time frame that's been set, make any allowances for that. So it will be important for you to contact somebody in the UAE that does have a mobile number that they would be happy for you to, to register on the portal on your behalf. Um, we've had instances of people saying, I haven't received any income, so I don't need to file. Um, that's not the case. If you're undertaking a relevant activity, but have not received any income, you do need to file a notification confirming that you haven't had any income. And then that will be the end of it. You then don't need to file a report. Uh, but it is important to make sure you register um, the notification confirming that there is no income. But please again, look at the definitions of the relevant activities to make sure your company is actually undertaking the relevant activity um, and whether or not the income there comes afterwards. We're understandably working very heavily on the 2019 year, of course, um, and most of the filings we're seeing are for people that have reported filings to the 31st of December 2019. But this isn't a one-off process. This is this year, next year, every year. This is an ongoing for many years to come. Companies will every year have to file. So please think about the fact that I've done my 2019 filing, when is my 2020 filing due? And of course, the notification will be within six months of the year end, or the financial reporting period, and the report will be within 12 months. So please don't think this is job done because I've made the 2019 filings. It's an ongoing process. And then we just tried to explain again here um, how it works for companies with renewal periods that aren't a fixed financial year, but a company that renewed on the 1st of July 2019 has a period to the 30th of June 2020. Obviously six months have passed now, so it needs to have filed. Next year it would need to have filed um, by the end of the, uh, December in, in terms of this year's. Um, because that six month deadline has passed. And then please, once you file the notification, don't forget to diarize um, for the follow up report because I can understand how you know, another six months will pass um, and it would be easy to forget that there's then a report due. We don't have a mechanism at the moment, an easy mechanism for sending out reminders. I think this is something we'll discuss with the ministry to find out whether it's gonna be possible. Um, but at the moment, the obligation is on the company to file um, and the company to hit those deadlines. And of course, we'll do everything we can in terms of educating and re-educating and reminding, uh, but the obligation is with the company. I keep making the point that the main 
source of reliable, uh, reliable information is this website page of the ministry site. You can see how much information is there. There's the whole resolution, there's the relevant activities guide, which is really important in helping you decide whether your company is in scope or not. Uh, there's a flow chart that explains what needs to be reported when, a summary, a notice of how COVID-19 has affected the ability to hold board meetings in the UAE. Um, and it is understood that it may not have been possible and, and allowances are being made, but allowances are being made in the context of that um, notice. So very important if you want to rely on COVID-19 being the reason you haven't been able to have your board meetings in the UAE, very important that you look at that notice just to see how that affects you. Um, obviously a notice concerning the deadlines. A sample, if you're not sure what you need to file for the report or the notification, there are samples there. And then also very clear guidance on what needs to go into a report and what needs to go into a notification. So please don't hesitate to use this as a reference point, obviously now, uh, but of course the, the site keeps getting updated. So refer back to it on a, on a regular basis. Um, the, they've made it as easy as possible from that page to log into the ESR filings. And indeed, if you haven't already got a ministry registration to create a new user, and then also on the site, there is a YouTube video, uh, a link to the YouTube video of how to file on the portal. Um, so again, they've really gone to town in terms of putting the information out there, which will hopefully make this process um, very easy and straightforward for you. And particularly now that the site is working much, much better with the capacity, and hopefully that continues even as we get towards this month end deadline, um, they really have made every effort to make it straightforward for you. If you just visit the ministry site, you'll see that there's a login icon. So if you go to the Ministry of Finance, you hit that login icon, it will take you to um, the details that you need to log in. You would be registering as a private sector service to, um, to register ESR because you're doing it on behalf of a company. And then we put a page up here, which is uh, the information that you will need to be able to set your login up. And you can see the only um, information that you need is this telephone number and the system will reject non-UAE numbers. Um, one of the things that has happened is that, and particularly at the end of last year, where people weren't sure whether their filing had gone through or not, and so understandably refiled, um, it means that there are duplicate cases on the system. And so there's guidance here from the Ministry as to what you do if you have a duplicate case that you want to be deleted. We obviously have our own ESR at RAC ICC email box that we encourage you to use if you've got any queries about ESR that you feel we can help you with, but we're not obviously involved in access to the technical support. So the ministry have set up their own ESR support help desk. I've had to use it a few times. I've had queries, I've had instances where I've needed to contact them. They've been extremely responsive very clear in, in the messages that come back and very timely um, in, their, um, in their help. Um, so encourage you to contact them if you have any issues at all on the technical side um, of how to, to, to handle things. And particularly, as I say, the, the most common case we've seen at the moment is people needing to have duplicate cases deleted. We've had instances of people saying we're exempt from um, ESR requirements because we're UAE company that only operates in the UAE. We have no income outside of the UAE. Everything is in the UAE. And they've claimed that exemption by sending us an Emirates ID or a visa page from the passport. That is not in itself sufficient information to be able to claim that exemption. And we're having to then go back to, to those clients saying, 
Well, thank you for filing the notification. We're grateful that you've done it. Um, we note you're claiming the exemption. To claim the exemption, you will also have to provide a shareholder register, a structure chart, and a copy of financial statements for the relevant period, either management accounts, if financial statements are not available. Now, obviously, you're, some people will say to us, oh, but RAC ICC already knows some of that information. We've got the shareholder register, we've got the structure chart, possibly. But please bear in mind that this is information that's provided to the ministry. And so they can't rely on the information we're holding on our records. They need you to provide this evidence. We are then confirming that the, you know, the evidence that's provided matches our records. Um, but this is information that you need to provide to the ministry to be able to claim that exemption. And so for any exemption that you claim, please look at the report guide because it explains very clearly in the guide that's on the website what documentation you need to provide to support your exemption claim. I think we're going to be providing feedback to the ministry that says in the future, could it be made more clear on the portal what's required? Um, because that would also help in avoid these instances where um, only partial information is, is provided. This is probably the most important slide of the presentation because we have, uh, you're asked to confirm these three questions. You're saying we've got economic substance requirements, we have to have substance in the UAE, and you're asked to confirm whether you have sufficient qualified employees in the UAE, sufficient expenditure in the UAE, sufficient physical assets in the UAE. Now, we don't know what will happen if you say no to any of these questions. But please bear in mind that it's not, um, that the decision as to whether you have sufficient or adequate is very much subjective at the moment. There isn't anything out there that enables you to see, I've got one employee, that's enough. Um, I spend 5,000 dirhams with my registered agent, that's enough. I've got um, you know, a, a printer in the office, that's my physical asset, that's enough. There's no specific guidance on this. And this is something we're gonna learn about as the ministry review the reports that we've seen. But what is adequate and appropriate? This quote here is directly from the ministry guidance. They appreciate that it depends on nature and the level of relevant activities carried out by the licensee. A licensee will have to ensure it maintains sufficient records to demonstrate the adequacy and the appropriateness of the resources and assets utilized and the expenditure incurred in respect to these activities. It's possible that if you answer no to any of these questions, the ministry will determine that you haven't met economic substance and therefore issue a fine. It's also possible that they may just come back and say, could we clarify whether this is the case or not? Because we want to understand whether a fine is due. But please pay particular attention to this. Obviously answer it honestly. Obviously confirm that you are confident that the licensee has adequate resources. Um, but we have seen companies that have said no to these questions. And we don't know yet what the consequences for those are. Um, but it's likely that they will be liable to penalties because they're confirming that they haven't met economic substance in the UAE. Some jurisdictions have said that if we see this situation arise, we will provide guidance as to how to meet it in the future. And so it won't be a penalty now, but it will be um, something that would have to be rectified. The problem we have is that we're going back to 2019. So it's very difficult. You can't rectify anything about 2019 now. So it may be that penalties are imposed now, but there is a way to mitigate those penalties in the future by obviously employing, um, expenditure of physical assets. And please also remember that it doesn't have to be directly in the company. It can be through outsource agreements. So the qualified employees, the expenditure and the physical assets don't have to belong to the company, but they just have to be available to the company in the UAE through the outsource agreements in many circumstances. I'm not going to say that that will work for every instance, uh, but generally speaking, we're seeing that it's possible. The problem isn't whether the company has the assets in the UAE, it's whether the company has access to assets 
in the UAE that enable it to carry out the economic substance requirements in the UAE. I hope that's clear. Um, obviously, we'll try and give more context to that as we learn more um, about how the responses to these questions are, are handled. If you feel that you've answered one of those questions and actually you've reconsidered, you now don't think you did have enough or you do feel that you did have enough but you'd already submitted a report that said otherwise, um, one of the things you can do is request an amendment to the report um, and then we will release the report back to you for you to be able to resubmit with the answer that you consider to be most appropriate, um, bearing in mind um, the consequences of, of making a, a false or inaccurate declaration. So please reconsider this section of your reports again, um, because I think this is a key area that will get looked at um, going forward. And obviously we'll share with you any more guidance that we, we get on that. But anything I've said here is not to be taken literally by you as well, the Registrar of Iraq ICC said this, so we did that. We're providing general guidance. We're not providing a legal interpretation of the legislation on your behalf. Very important that you form your own view on compliance and take independent professional advice where you're not clear. Um, and again, understandably, we're providing you with a link to um, the ministry um, site and in particular, the guidance documentation and how to provide, how to file the reports and the notifications. So what's next? Well, obviously what's next is comply with the deadlines and that means complying with the 31st of January deadline, but all deadlines, you know, going forward, always diarising your company to make sure you know uh, that you've made the filings on time and appropriately. We've added into the annual return for RAC ICC um, a declaration page, a declaration place, where we want all companies to confirm that they've considered ESR and either have made the filings that are needed or will make the filings that are needed um, going forward. So every year when you're renewing your company, we're going to be reminding you that there's an ESR obligation. And we're also going to be reminding you that there's a UBO obligation. We want you to ensure that the UBO information filings are also up to date. Um, and then here is just another list explaining how to make, you know, the deadlines for, for filings. And it doesn't stop, you know, a company that had its um, year end on the 31st of March 2020 needs to file its, um, you know, its notification now and its report by March. I hope that's been useful. Uh, I appreciate a lot of just talking from me. I'm sorry the session hasn't been interactive so far. Um, we, I'm just gonna roll through the questions that I'm seeing on the screen. So apologies while I, I read through them and, and answer. Um, the first question we have is, we filed the ESR filing last year, do we need to file again? You need to file if you haven't yet filed on the ministry portal. If you filed on the ministry portal in December when it became available, you don't need to, to file again. Um, we've been asked um, whether offshore companies need to file. Yes, offshore companies do need to file. It's very important that all offshore, that, that RAC ICC companies file if they have relevant activities. It says on the ministry site clearly, just because it's an offshore company, it, it does still need to file. Uh, yes, there'll be a copy of the presentation and actually the webinar will be available on the, the website. Um, I agree with you. We hope you haven't missed any. Um, we can't at the moment extract out um, details specifically. And the part, the part of the reason for that is a holding company that we have registered as a holding company 
isn't necessarily a pure equity holding company in terms of relevant activities. So the definition that we have in our activity register doesn't necessarily meet the ESR definitions. However, um, if you do want any extracts from us, um, we'll be happy to try and provide you with some information that is useful. For example, um, you're able to look at the filings that you've already made with RAC ICC if you visit the, port uh, the RAC ICC portal, and then you can check that with what you've filed against the ministry to see whether you've um, missed, missed anything. Um, so David, yeah, please contact us for anything um, specific you'd like us to try and provide, and same for any, any agent, if there are any extracts of our data that you feel would be helpful, um, we will um, answer that. Uh, if the financial year ends, year ended on the 31st of January 2020, yes, you will have to file a report by the 31st of January 2021, because it will be within one year. Um, sorry, I'm, Stefano, I'm, I'll come back to you on that question. I'll read it properly and come back to you. Um, Mary, the guidelines mention the event license is managed by shareholders. Um, we can't give you advice as to whether or not the company has been managed and controlled. That's not an area that RAC ICC will um, have a view on. Um, obviously, if the general manager was present in the board meetings, um, you're making a self-declaration as to whether you feel it was um, it, it was appropriate or not. Um, I don't feel that's something that RAC ICC um, will be able to, to, to offer advice on. So apologies, just a case of looking at the guidance. Um, liquidated companies don't need to file if the liquidation was completed by the notification deadline. So recently liquidated companies, to my view, don't need to file. You can, um, obviously there's nothing stopping you filing. If there was a contention afterwards over whether you should have filed or not, you can make justification that the, li the liquidation of the company led you to believe it didn't need to, to file. Um, yes, they, the, um, the email address you can use is available on the ministry portal. Um, we will also be putting the slides up if you need to look it back up there. Or if you want to email into our esrracicc.com address, we will send you the details of the, um, of the case. Um, you can, an offshore company can have economic substance in the UAE through outsource agreements or if it feels actually it needs to become more substantial, it could convert to being an onshore company, or it could um, have an outsource um, ag agreement or, or set up a branch um, onshore so, or in a free zone. So just because you're an offshore company doesn't mean that it's impossible for you to meet the economic substance. Yeah, if you filed last year, if the information is already on the portal, then you don't need to, to file again. But if you haven't filed on the ministry portal, um, you do. Um, on that exemption, again, look at the guides. I, I don't want to give a, a flippant answer um, straight away or be misinterpreted because the definitions of group are important, uh, the definitions of residency and what you need to back that up with are important. So um, please, if you want to claim an exemption, look carefully at the requirements to make sure you're confidently claiming it. Of course, one of our roles is to look at that and, um, and, and decide whether you have provided sufficient evidence. So we will continue doing that.
Um, again, I'm not going to answer this um, live uh, answer. Um, the guidance is there. Email into ESR at RAC ICC, or I'll, we will come back. We'll keep this question open. Um, I don't want to just give a, a, an answer when I haven't properly read the, the, the question. So apologies for that. Um, again, um, Jalal, is it mandatory to claim exemption for a branch? You don't have to claim exemptions. Um, but obviously, why would you commit yourselves to ESR if you felt you were exempt? Um, and then obviously, if you are claiming the exemption, then it's important to um, provide the evidence that, that you need. Um, a struck off company isn't clear. Um, and the reason I say that is because part of the guidance says that a company only needs to file if it has a valid license. And obviously a company that's been struck off doesn't have a valid license. Um, but other parts of the guidance talk about liquidation. So again, this is an area where you should get professional advice to see what you feel the risks are associated with your company, not filing for when the company has been struck off, um, because we can't categorically say to you that a company that has been struck off doesn't need to file. Uh, that's something you will need to determine um, the risk on for yourself. Um, if a licensee has a June year end, then the reportable period for the notification is six months after June. And then for the report is 12 months after June. So I hope that's clear. Financial year ends 21st of December, 2020, would have to file by the 21st of December. The, the, the report would be the 21st of December, 2021. The notification will be by June, 2021. Six months for the notification, 12 months for the report. Um, yes, so the exemption documentation is in the portal guidance. There's a document that says um, notification guidance and the details you need for the exemption are, are in that document. Um, ESR is not linked directly, as far as I understand, to AOCD compliance. Um, it's if you conduct a relevant activity, it doesn't matter whether it's a non-OECD compliant country or not. If you're conducting a relevant activity, you have to meet economic substance. Um, bear in mind, if it's about distribution and service, that's only for group companies. So you could be conducting a relevant activity. You could be conducting distribution and service with a third party in an OECD country, non-OECD compliant country, and need to make a file. But similarly, um, you could be conducting a relevant activity in an OECD company with a group company as a distribution, you would need to file. So if it's within a group, you need to file. If it's not within a group, you, you wouldn't. I hope that um, answers that. Um, I think that's all the questions. I'm sorry if there's anything that we, you would have wanted us to cover that we haven't. Um, don't hesitate to email into esr at We will try and respond to you quickly. You'll appreciate we are extremely busy at the moment. We have an awful lot of reports to go through. Uh, we have a lot of notifications to go through. We've got a lot of queries to answer. That's only going to get busier as we get towards the end of the month. So please don't leave it to the 31st of January in a panic, not sure what you need to do, and then end up with a fine because you didn't take action um, sooner. Obviously, uh, the, the quicker you can work on this, um, the more um, you can, can help. I hope that's been useful. Um, the intention is, you know, for this session was to help you meet that regulatory obligation. Uh, the team here is absolutely dedicated and committed to supporting you in that. Um, we're working very closely with the ministry to make the process as smooth as we can. And if we find out any more information uh, we will let you know. Um, but in the meantime, I just wish you well with the filing um, and thank you very much for your cooperation and your support. 
Um, I'll end the session now and uh, appreciate your, your time with us today. Thank you.